So before we get started, I want to show you the battlefield and the final setup before the match begins. So I want to scan the battlefield one last time before the game starts just to get a good feel of how it looks and then you can see the starting areas which are in purple. That's the location where you will place your teams in the beginning of the game. So now that you have your team in the starting area you're going to need some tokens and these tokens are going to be used to mark your actions when your characters do something. You're obviously going to need a set of dice. Two sets of dice is preferable if you're going to have two players. And then you're going to need objects. Each team gets one yellow light object and one red heavy object. And then you have the option to use a special object. But in this case I'm just going to give one of the teams the extra heavy object and the other team the light object. So one thing you need to know about placing objects, they need to be five squares away from your starting area. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll put them there, place another one here, and then another there. And that's just an example of placing your objects. All right, now that we have the objects on the map and our teams are both in their starting zones, let's get this started. So now onto the gameplay. I will simulate the Hero Clicks match while going over the figures, powers, and abilities as they come. So let's get it started. Wonder Woman and Mira go first because they won the role in the first video. Now both of these characters have charge and 10 movements and they both are flyers. So they are very similar when they move. But one thing I need to mention, flyers cannot carry other flyers. So both of these characters will have to move separately. Flyers can only carry grounded characters. So let's move Wonder Woman and before I move her I need to tell you about her super strength power where she can pick up an object. I'm gonna have her fly all the way over here. She has 10 movement and pick up this object. So she didn't use all of her movement but that's fine. She picks this object up and then you give her a token. Once a character finishes their move or attack, you put a token on them to show that they are done. If you have other actions to do, like we do, we can move Mira, then you continue on to the next figure. And now for her, all we're going to do is just fly her over here. That's another 8 movements and she has 10, so she's fine, and you put a token on her. Now that your team finished all their actions, it's the other player's turn, and they go. So now it's the Green Lantern team's turn to go, and because it's a 300 point game, you have three actions you can do. You can either move or attack. The first thing we're going to do here is have Green Lantern carry the Atom because Green Lantern is a flyer and Atom is a grounded character, so they are able to do that. When a flyer carries a character, you subtract two from the movement. Green Lantern's movement is a 12, so if he carries the Atom, his movement will be a 10 now. So you just carry them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you just set down the character in an adjacent square next to the character that flew him up there. And then when you're done, you put a token on him. And the Atom cannot make an action this turn because he was carried. And now we're going to have Scarecrow fly in behind Green Lantern. Put a token on him. And if you can see this box they're in, it's Hindering Terrain. If a character shoots a character in Hindering Terrain or through Hindering Terrain, the character that is being shot gets the bonus on their defense. And if you move through it and you don't have a power that gets you through it safely, like Leap Climb, or if you're a flyer, or if you have phase in powers like that, then once you hit the hindering terrain, you have to stop. Once you move out of it, your movement is half. Because the Scarecrow and Green Lantern are flyers, they're not affected by the terrain for movement purposes. And before you declare your turn over, make sure your characters don't have any abilities that will help you defend yourself. Scarecrow has Perplex. Now with Perplex, Scarecrow can perplex up one of his stats or a friendly character or an enemy that they can see. Now because he can only see Green Lantern and himself, he can only perplex these two characters. And for an example, Green Lantern has a 17 defense. Scarecrow can perplex up Green Lantern's defense up to an 18. So that's what we're going to do for this turn. And then you can declare your turn over. So Green Lantern now has an 18 defense. And now that your turn's over, your opponent can go now. So now that it's Wonder Woman's and Mare's turn, you have a couple options here. They both have tokens, but Wonder Woman has Indomitable, which means if she tacks or moves this turn, she won't take a click of damage because Indomitable gives her willpower, and that means she can take two tokens without taking a click of damage. Mira does not have that ability, so if she decided to move or attack this turn, she would take a click of damage. So the first thing we're going to do here is see if pushing Wonder Woman would be beneficial to us. She has a charge of 10, which means she can move half of her movement and then make a close combat attack. Now the closest person she can attack is the Atom. So she can move one, two, three, 
four, five. She would not be able to charge on the atom. So pushing her right now would be kind of pointless. So both of these figures are gonna clear and your turn is over. And when you clear, you just pick up your tokens. So now it's Green Lantern's team to decide what they wanna do. Green Lantern and Scarecrow both have tokens. So if they do actions this round, they will take a click of damage. But the atom has no tokens, so he's able to be given an action. Now I'm going to move the atom using phase in, which allows him to move his full speed value. He ignores all train effects even the walls here and it also gives him the ability to break away automatically and move through opposing characters let's move him using phase in to tie up Mira to prevent Mira from charging on to the Green Lantern because she has a 10 movement you have that it's one two three four five and she would be able to charge on him so now that they are tied up when it's her turn she either has to attack the atom or try to break away and attack someone else. So this is a defensive move to prevent Mira attacking Green Lantern. And like last turn, as a free action, we're gonna use Perplex to perplex up Green Lantern's defense up to an 18. And since these two characters did not attack or move, you clear them, and before I forget, put a token on the atom for moving, and then you clear them, and then the Green Lantern's turn is over. In most cases, it's smart to attack with the character with the highest attack value first, which is Mira, with the 11. But it's not a rule you must follow, it just gives you the best chance of success. So let's have Mira attack Adam, but first let's see which powers each of them have that might come into play. Mira has charge, but she's already based, so that's not into effect. She has a special power called Red Rage, but it only comes into effect if she has been damaged and she has not yet, so that's not effective yet. And she has Battle Fury, which means she cannot be targeted from a mind control attack, but this is definitely not that. But she can only make close combat attacks. But this is a close combat attack, so she will be able to do that. So none of her powers come into effect on this attack roll. But now let's see what the Atom has to make life harder on Mera. He has phase in, that's not gonna come into effect. He has in cap, nope. And he has energy shield deflection. That gives you a bonus to your defense if you are targeted by a ranged attack. This is a close combat attack, so he will not get that bonus. But the Atom's final power on his dial is shape change. If he is targeted for a close combat attack or ranged attack, the Atom gets to roll a d6 on the result of a 5 or a 6. The character that's trying to attack him is not able to attack him and must choose a different action. Now because Mira is based with the Atom, if he rolls his shape change attack, she is not able to do anything, but she still has to take an action for attempting to do the attack. So let's have the Atom roll and see if he can prevent this attack. He rolls a 5, so that does prevent the attack and Mira is not able to attack the Atom. He did prevent that. So Mira gets a token for her attempt to attack him, but he said no way. Now it's Wonder Woman's turn and she did not like that whatsoever. So she is gonna charge on the Atom with the heavy object. Atom gets to roll his shape change again. Let's do that roll. He rolls a four, so he misses his shape change roll. So one Woman is able to use the charge with the heavy object on the Atom. She has a 10 attack. The Atom has an 18 defense. And the Wonder Woman does four damage plus two with the heavy object. So this would do six clicks of damage if she can roll an eight. And if she misses the first roll, she has probability control, which means she can re-roll that attack. Her first attack is a five. She will use her probability and re-roll that attack. Wonder Woman rolled an eight. So this attack hits, you remove the object, and the character takes six clicks of damage. You just move it. Like one, two, three, four, five, six. The character is KO'd when you see the KO on there. And then Wonder Woman is given a token and her turn is complete. So the Atom was knocked out and you remove his token. Now this completes the Wonder Woman and Mira's turn. They have tokens on them and there's no free actions they can use. So now it's the Green Lantern's turn. Now these two figures have options now. They're both flyers so the hindering terrain is not a hindrance to them. They can just fly out of there with no reductions of their movement. And they have run and shot which means they can go half their movement and then make a ranged attack on a character. Green Lantern has a move of 12 so half that is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So he can get to this line right here. Now he doesn't necessarily need to get that far to do anything, but he has options. And then Scarecrow has movement of 8, so his run and shot would be 4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. So he can go that far. As you can see, the 12 is a lot better than the 8. 